Hey everybody, Alex here, out of the Park 23 Pittsburgh Pirates franchise, episode number 21, and the Pirates are just finishing up their 2028 season. No, it's been a couple weeks since our last video, apologize for that, but I promise this series is not over, far from it. As you can see, Pittsburgh finishing the year 81 and 81, so right at 500, it really was an interesting and bumpy year and a pretty wild finish for this uh, Pirates team, so let's talk about it. Looking at some of the overall numbers here, you can see that we should have performed better than we did, 85 and 77 Pythagorean record. That sure would have been nice, our one run game luck to not go in our direction, just 19 and 29. Um, offensively, as has been the case throughout basically this entire series, it's been poor and the pitching staff perked up um, throughout the second half of the season um, to lead us to 81 and 81. As you can see, uh, consistently okay uh, throughout the season, a pretty poor May, then pick things up in, in June at 15 and 12, 15 and 12 in August. What, what I think is more interesting to show you guys is the standings here. Um, for the longest time, we were just completely you know out of this race. I'll, I'll show you guys here by uh, July 31st. Uh, yeah, 54 and 55. Um, they even go into more you know, August 31st. We're, we're two games over. Um, it felt like our season was over. I don't know if I can show the uh, wild card standings by date, but I mean, we were seven, eight games out at, you know, at one point. And so you look at September 1st, where we sat at. Yeah, just one game over 500. And then we got on this really incredible hot streak. I think our team chemistry helped out in a pretty big way. Um, even September 7th, still just two games over 500. You know, not really the wild card race you were kind of looking at a little bit, but a week later, we're now four games over. And then uh, things kind of really fell apart. And so at one point, and again, I can't really show it here, we were just one game out of that last wild card spot. Um, and then we just collapsed from there. So um, yeah, I think we got our best at. Let me check here. It was September 11th, September 10th, somewhere around there, 76 and 71. And then a week later, we were 77 and 79. So went on this really big losing losing streak. I should show you guys the schedule. That would probably help out better. So in September, yeah, we had beat the Brewers in a doubleheader. Um, really had a great streak going. And then ended up losing, what is that, four, five, six, eight in a row. Uh, I think at this point we were one game out of the wild card spot on September 12th, and then it all just collapsed from there, and then won the final three, sweeping uh, the Reds, I guess, in this uh, home and home series, the back half of, of it uh, at PNC Park to to finish out the year at 500. So really crazy year where I thought for the longest time we were out of it. I was shutting guys down. We get back into it, get right there, and then collapse and ultimately missed the playoffs so we'll show you guys the standings here overall the teams that did make it the cardinals won the nl central with 99 wins the cubs making a wild card appearance with 95 uh, and 67 as their record on the season the reds finishing in the last uh, one game behind the brewers at 70 and 92 um, the dodgers surprisingly really bad this year 71 and 91 so um brian reynolds had been hurt quite a bit and uh, was just, just the average this year. So not missing him, I guess, all that much. You can see the NL East. It's Atlanta and New York. In the West, it is San Diego and San Francisco. Over in the AL, Baltimore, Toronto, Cleveland, Houston, Seattle, and the LA Angels are making it out of there. Before we get into the stats of the season, I want to talk about a couple trades we made before the deadline. Generally speaking, more sellers than buyers, but a couple interesting moves here. I'll start with Davis Martin, a pitcher that we picked up, I think, in last year's trade deadline. He got shipped out to Philadelphia as they made their playoff push, um, was doing well for us, and did uh, about the same for Philadelphia. And so in return, Pirates getting... Nothing uh, dramatically good, but an interesting outfielder here um, who's only 20, just about to turn 21. So um, good defensively, corner outfielder, not a lot of pop in the back, but um, high contact potential, high avoid case. And so that's interesting. And then a pitcher here in Felix Leal, um, who's down in AAA, late call up there, but uh, was really tearing it up in uh, AA with Altoona, the curve. And so 
Um, that's a guy that 24 years old um, isn't necessarily the type of pitcher I look for in terms of the, the flamethrower with you know higher stuff, but uh, a guy that may be a long reliever number five type. Other trade we made was more of a, a lateral move, a swap uh, in the sense of trading Jared Jones, who's always looked like he has good potential with 60 stuff and four you know pretty impressive pitches, but just never really panned out for us in every opportunity. Uh, that we gave him in the majors just kind of a 4a guy that you know wasn't terrible um in 2025 was poor came up in 2026 was really poor uh had a couple of starts in 2027 that were more promising but a limited sample size and just a guy that i felt like just couldn't tap into that potential that he had so he goes to arizona where he was just below league average and in return getting a really interesting prospect and first baseman slash dh Tabor fast who was doing a great job in arizona in uh just under 400 plate appearances had a 115 wrc plus with 28 doubles 13 home runs and so that's a guy that to me is cheap power 24 years old and uh did pretty well for pittsburgh in 33 games uh, 31 starts a 132 wrc plus with nine home runs and six doubles um, the average was down a bit the bat pip was pretty low but he's a team captain he's cheap we're gonna lose some of our leadership uh, this offseason it's gonna be a big offseason for the pittsburgh pirates and so uh, a guy like this just kind of had a chance to get not typically the trade that i make it's a little bit questionable is that good value there am i kind of stealing Tabor fast but i decided to do it because i knew that jones had potential just wasn't working out in our system kind of a tyler glass now type player so now looking at the stats of the season and including all players, and I'm looking at this page because if you look at the lineup roster, it won't include guys that aren't on your major league you know, roster currently uh, with a big, big league club. They won't show the injured guys. And so this is a better way to do that. You see Tabor Fast doing well. Um, that might combine his, uh, yeah, that combines his Arizona and uh, Pittsburgh stats. But Nick Gonzalez, you know, this, this is going to be it for Nick Gonzalez. He's a, a captain, a leader. Um, he's a solid bat, but defensively, he's really poor. Uh, as a second baseman, it's not the most critical position that you want or need good defense at, but a almost negative 10 zone rating with 14 errors. He's 29, and the biggest issue with Nick Gonzalez is arbitration estimate of over $8 million next year. We're pretty financially strapped right now. We're still paying Keith Brian Hayes and Christopher Cruz's contracts. Going to go up in a couple of arbitration-eligible guys that I, I want and need to keep. So um, he's not... He will be um, he won't be tendered, but I'm going to trade him before arbitration begins. And I don't know where he's going to go. I'm not quite sure on the return. Maybe some bullpen arms, maybe a corner outfielder. But you know he's been a good player for us. But I just can't justify the price tag and a bat that's good, but it's not so overwhelming that he has to stay. You can see the bats overall. Only a couple players above league average. RJ Shrek and he kind of came on strong late, but you know, 241 average isn't great, and just the 106 WRC plus and the guy that again not great in the field. Key Brian Hayes has been hurt some. A guy that I was kind of shutting down. Only played 85 games this year. Uh, he had with a torn labrum that he was trying to come back from and then had a hamstring strain. He's fragile, so he's 31. Not loving the combination of things there, but good whenever he was available. Uh, called up Stephen Millam, uh, acquired in a trade back in 2025 when some of the infield injuries hit and he was you know, serviceable. He'll be in the mix for maybe backup infielder work next year. Um, Edwin Arroyo Jr., a bit of a decrease, predictably so, from last year, but still came on strong towards the end and, and really solid defensively. I'm really happy with that trade we made with Boston. Mew, our center fielder, outfielder, was up for most of the season, um, was at 300 average for a large portion of the year, kind of cooled down a bit late. Still looking for that first career home run. I think about 500 career at bats. He's never hit a, a home run, but, um, you know, a guy that is well-rounded and stole 21 bases for us this year. James Wood has been disappointing. Um, he was up and down. He's been hurt some as well, but just a guy that has, you know, pop 15 home runs. Kind of an O'Neill Cruz type, big, long guy. Uh, Cruz, by the way, in Milwaukee, almost hit 30 home runs this year. So he kind of, you know, found new life out there with the Brewers. But James Wood, just never quite the guy I thought or hoped that he would be. Uh, Nick Dial has had an up and down year. You see the final numbers, they look pretty poor overall. But one thing to note with him, if you look at his major league splits, we sent him down in July because he was struggling so much. You see the negative 31 WRC plus hitting 114 really bottomed out there and wasn't doing that well prior to that. Um, spent the month of August, you know, down in AAA, did really well, 
came back up in September and hit 292 with a 143 WRC plus. Those strikeout rate higher than maybe you wanted to be in the walk rate. Not great, but certainly better overall. The bat pip was you know generous to him, so can he sustain that? That's a valid critique, but it was a good um, end of the season. Hopefully he can grow during the offseason and be better for because we need this guy to be uh, a strong, steady center fielder for us. How many uh, bases did he steal this year? Can I um, can I find that information? 14, so a little bit of, a, of an asset on the uh, base paths as well. The guys who struggle, Tatsuri Nageshi, former first-round pick, just hasn't worked out, become a 4A guy, good in AAA, um, just has not done well at the major league level. Ricardo Cabrera, Rule 5 pick, was hurt for a good portion of the year with a, uh, a back injury, and so I was kind of stashing him a little bit. Uh, came up late and did a bit better towards the end of the season, but still disappointing um, overall, but he'll be in the mix. Dolphin Ramirez had gotten hurt. He's now fragile. I don't know if he was fragile before. Um, 18 home runs. He kind of got off to a really bad start and then did pick things up um, a little bit later on, so let me pull up the stats here. Um, yeah, it, he, he missed uh, quite a bit of time, but it was in April. He was really bad, and then he kind of returned to more normal throughout the rest of the year. Um, but we'll see what he can do with him and Tabor Fast. That's kind of first baseman DH. Uh, Gavin Sheets was miserable for us. He'll be a Parisian. He's not coming back, and he does not want to come back. So, um, yeah, he hit just 220 with a 72 WRC plus and 54 starts for us this year. So, Gavin Sheets, his time in Pittsburgh is over just one year removed from a you know pretty solid year now looking at the pitching staff and it was pretty bumpy throughout the year alec marsh leading the team in pitching but he really struggled down the stretch and i wonder about his future with the pirates looking at his uh splits here you can really see him uh struggle especially in the month of august and september especially i didn't even realize that yeah 11 era and five starts uh that is a troubling sign for an aging player. Uh, Luis Avito was solid, and he's been you know, consistent and, and luckily uh, so far stayed healthy despite that fragile tag. Feels like fragile players aren't as uh, um, hurt as they were in past iterations of this game, although it feels like there were more fragile players, fewer rec players, more fragile players, I guess is my overall vibe there. Dylan Lesko, uh, disappointing. Uh, looks like he should be doing better. That third pitch might, or lack of that third pitch might be hurting him some, but he was... Uh, solid in 17 starts last year, so the bat pip was up a little bit, you know, maybe some noise there. Don't know what his FIP was for the year. If I can maybe try to find what his uh, FIP was, 446, and so that's pretty much in line with the ERA, slightly better, but we'll see if he can develop more this offseason. Christopher Cruz had some minor injuries, uh, some back tightness and elbow strain, and I kind of shelved him late in the season, but he was excellent with a whip under one, um, really one of his better seasons, which is saying a lot considering the type of player that he is. Uh, the stats say it was actually his best, but uh, in more limited innings, which is fine in the year in which we did not actually make the playoffs, I'm good with uh, not overtaxing him. And the rest of the guys, in terms of bullpen, uh, Nick Mears was excellent as he continues to to shine, Beck Way had a big breakout year, 181 ERA, uh, 236 ERA plus. He is fragile again. That seems to be common with a lot of these guys. Uh, Denny Bentley calmed down after a really poor start to the year. Um, Trey Duffield, you know, got some work, some mixed results there. A lot of different options as some of our guys got hurt. Trent Jones, polarizing guy, uh, great stuff, terrible control, but overall, he kind of will occasionally blow up and not, you know, not have a good outing, but. Um, you know, I kind of like the direction he's going in right now. Quick note for the All-Star game. I don't think we talked about it last time. I don't think I showed the All-Stars that we had this year, but it was Christopher Cruz who made now what his uh, third All-Star game. So great start for him. Nick Mears, uh, his first time. And then also reliever Alberto Guerrero making it. So uh, kudos to him. So nice to see the, uh, the pitching heavy pirates be represented again. Beyond that, looking at our salaries for next year, um, again, Nick Gonzalez with a high arbitration estimate. He's going to be gone. Luis Avito, I do want to bring back Stephen Kwan, Joey Bart. They're going to be gone. We'll see about the relievers. Nick Mears, I want to come uh, keep uh, and, and have him remain a pirate, but that's a pretty heavy arbitration uh, amount. Uh, beyond that, Edwin Arroyo is going to be, I think, reasonably cheap to, to retain there, so that won't be an issue. And we'll do some other cost cutting along the way because basically we got to be at around 75 million as our payroll and so we're sitting around 91 projected 
So we're going to have to certainly make some moves. So it'll be an off season of trades and kind of a little bit of retooling. I don't think it'll be a full rebuild. There's some good prospects uh, on, on the way, but we're going to have to be smarter with our finances. So I think that basically sums everything up. You can see our team chemistry was excellent. And that probably propelled, you know, part of the comeback that we had, although we collapsed towards the end. So, you know, how do you want to interpret that? Again, the leadership will change some. Quan's almost certainly going to be gone. Bart's going to be gone. Gonzalez will be gone. We'll have Fast. We'll have Hayes. Uh, some guys that'll come up. Some some catchers that I'm excited about. We'll talk about probably more in the next video. And we'll see what we can do. We can see what trades we can make. Hopefully, there'll be some teams that have financial flexibility to take on contracts. And we can actually make some moves. So, um, we'll see what happens. I'm excited for the future for this team. Disappointed to, to not make the playoffs after making the playoffs last year and disappointed that we kind of got back in the race. And as soon as we got really close and right there back in the wild card competition, we just fell off immediately, but that's baseball. So check on the injuries here for some of these guys, Andrew Schultz, torn rotator cuff. He missed almost the entire year. Hopefully he can come back and Jason Foldy will not be back next year, and Ryan Hendricks got hurt in a car accident uh, back in September 10th, and um, you know, who will uh, be under contract next year and hopefully be good to go. So excited for this team, the prospects here. I've uh, got some names that are coming up sooner than later. Luis Morales has been just crushing uh, down there in the minors, called him up, called him up to AA uh, late this year, and he continued to to rate to, uh, Tony Luces hurt his thumb, but um, you know he's a bit slower paced guy right now, but should be in double A, will be in double A to start next year. Maybe he can come up late in the season. Gil Quintos is really a bat only, but he's been just mashing. He'll be in double A next year too as a potential future um, DH type of guy. Some other interesting names, uh, the catches we talked about, Cade Arambide looks really promising. Um, he could be up as early as late next year is my projection. Uh, Dean Moss has been raking as well in double A. He could be potentially even you know opening day of 2029 uh, maybe a you know june july type call up so that's one name to watch pitchers have been maybe a little bit more slow played here this guy's um jesus carrera's got got a ways to go um but sal ramos um he's been injured hopefully he comes back okay that's a name to watch and i believe he's no longer a prospect but hopefully that's not a, a bad sign but uh dylan quest that he got hurt uh, never pitched for the uh, Pirates this year. He had a torn rotator cuff in May. It seemed to be maybe more partially turn, uh, torn. And so his scouting report has seemed to be okay post-injury. So fingers crossed for that. But he's supposed to be our next kind of great Pirates pitcher. I'm, um, again, trying to develop that third pitch, that changeup. But um, he's been really strong in the in the minors in AAA over the last two years. So um, hopefully he can you know, help us out of the gate in 2029 so that will wrap up today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed it i know i moved through the season pretty fast but i try to do that in years in which we do not make the playoffs the years of course that we do i slow things down we enjoy the playoff push and just kind of felt like we were out of it until very late in the year and so uh, ultimately finished four games out but for much of the season we were seven eight games out made that push late and then fell off so that's kind of how the season went but we'll be back with the 2029 offseason which will probably be pretty active this roster i think will look fairly different you know typically i don't make a ton of changes each year um this year may be an exception I'm not going to go sign a lot of free agents probably hardly any but trades and cost cutting and some of these prospects we've, we've been waiting on um, i think will appear in 2029 so let me know your thoughts in the comments below appreciate you guys watching please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and we'll talk to you soon